So we are here for our family Christmas service, and we've already been talking about Christmas traditions and all of that, and this is a little bit of a tradition. It's, I, I'm trying to remember, did I ever do a family Christmas ever since I've come here in 2017? Don't think, that's right. Yeah, I know that Kersey did that and was really big on it, and then we didn't do it. So maybe we're starting a new tradition again. Family Christmas. So there it is. Okay, well, I know it wasn't me on that one. So, <laughs> Well, let's uh, go ahead and get started by standing and singing a Christmas carol. We're going to sing, What Child Is This? Okay, guys, actually, we're going to use the words up here. So come on over here so you can see the screen. Okay? We'll sing it together. What child is this who laid to rest? on Mary's lap is sleeping, who angels greet with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Gracious God, we thank you for your love for us and how you showed your love for us by sending Jesus. And on this Christmas Eve, as we celebrate the Christmas story and think about Jesus being born, may we have hearts that look forward to not only learning the story more, but embracing all that it means, your love for us, which never ends. Amen. Amen. All right, well, please be seated. Because now it is time to finish our tradition of lighting the Advent wreath, and in particular, the Christ candle in the middle. And so I'm going to ask some of you guys to come and help me with this. So which of you, well, I can see that there's a couple right away. So Lydia and Frankie, why don't you come right up, and we're going to each get a chance to light a candle. So what we'll do is we'll start off, just because you're up there already, we'll start and light this candle here. There you go, Frankie, just go ahead and take that. Use two hands. And we're gonna light the first candle. And what we often say is this candle is the candle of hope. And we're gonna light the next candle, this one here. And this is the one that we usually call the candle of peace. These themes are pretty important in Advent. Now, Gabriel, do you wanna light one? Why don't you come on up and light a candle, Gabe? Come on, Gabriel. Oh, thank you. Good eye. So, Gabriel, we'll have you light this pink candle here. This is the candle of joy. So, if you want to take that, two hands, and can you reach up here and light this candle here? 
There we go. Okay, let's do this going good. Oh, you got it. Good job. There, the candle of joy. Excellent. Thank you. Gloria, do you want to light a candle? Yeah. Let's see if we can help you out here a little bit. So we'll have you hold that with both hands. Okay. And we'll get you up here. And you're going to light the candle of love. Okay. There we go. Oh, just a sec there. Okay, good. Thank you, Gloria. Yes, so now we have those four candles lit. Alex, you want to come and light the Christ candle? He hasn't lit candle yet, so that's good. So now the Christ candle only gets lit on Christmas. Whoops, got to move this forward a bit. And it only gets lit on this day. It represents Jesus. So I might have to get a little bit further behind the candle. There we are. Excellent. Thank you, guys. So there we have our Advent wreath, which is now complete. And one of the neat things about the Advent wreath is as we light one candle at a time, you get a little bit more light coming in all the time. And so now it's really quite bright and we're ready for Christmas. All right, Gloria, we're going to sing another song. You ready for that? So let's go and let's sing a song that's really familiar to us about baby Jesus. And that is the song, Away in a Manger. So let's stand up again, and we'll sing this song, and then we'll get into the Christmas story itself. Tonight, we want to take a look at the Christmas story, because after all, it is Christmas. And one of the reasons why it's good to take a look at the Christmas story is sometimes we can be so familiar with parts of it, we don't understand all of it. And so today, what we want to do is make that happen. Now, to be honest, it's kind of interesting. There are four books in the Bible about Jesus. They are called the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they are actually represented sometimes by these symbols. The eagle represents John. The angel, or the son of man, represents Matthew. The lion represents Mark. And the ox represents Luke. Well, out of the four Gospels, only two of them talk about the Christmas story. One of them is Matthew, and one of them is Luke. And if you just read Matthew and just read Luke, what you find out is they actually are kind of two different stories. The way that they write them Matthew and Luke didn't get together to talk about it, so it's kind of interesting. What we're going to do today is try to mush the two stories together, and let me just be honest, it isn't a perfect fit, but it gives us something that we can see so that we hear what Matthew is saying and what Luke is saying at the same time to understand the story of Jesus' birth. But how we're going to do that is by making sure that you understand where it all happens, because this all happened in a particular place. It happened in a place called Israel, which is over in the Middle East. And so we're going to map out where this is. 
We're going to start, first of all, with the capital city of Israel, which is Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is right here. Okay, that's what we're going to remember, the city of Jerusalem. Now, another important city is the city of Nazareth. And Nazareth was way up in the north from Jerusalem, so it's over here. We'll talk about that city when we get closer. And does anybody know the name of this city? Bethlehem, right? Sorry, I should have let you say it, Alex. What's important about Bethlehem? Right. And so where Bethlehem is, it's about eight kilometers southwest of Jerusalem. So right here, there's Bethlehem. So we know that city's going to come up, but we're going to talk about all these places. Now I have another city here, and, and, and the Bible doesn't give us the name of this city, but to kind of help us get the idea, I've decided to call it the name. This is the capital of Iraq, Baghdad. And it's over in the east. So we're just going to go ahead and put it here, just to represent where the east is. And then we have one last place, and I'm not even giving a city name, just talking about Egypt. And Egypt, it could be the city of Cairo, maybe Luxor, but Egypt is over here. So we're just going to leave those places there, because all of these places factor into the Christmas story. So how the Christmas story starts is we have this young woman, probably just a teenage girl named Mary, and she lives in Nazareth. And she's engaged to be a man to a man named Joseph. So Joseph and Mary both live in Nazareth, and they're going to get married. Joseph is a builder. We often say he's a carpenter, but the reality is there wasn't a whole lot of wood over there. They would build things with stone and brick and stuff, and so kind of the same thing as what a carpenter does. He builds houses and things like that. That's what he does for a living. And so he and Mary are going to get married, but they aren't married yet. And Mary is doing her thing, just kind of doing whatever she does. Maybe she's reading a book. Maybe she's writing a letter. Who knows what she's doing? But she's doing something, and then all of a sudden, bam, this angel appears out of nowhere. And she's totally freaked out, but the angel says, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. And Mary says, And also with you. <laughs> and then Gabriel says, I know, <laughs> because I come from God. <laughs> My name is Gabriel. I'm an angel, and I'm here to tell you that you have found favor with God. And in fact, what's going to happen is you are going to be pregnant with a baby, and when that baby's born, he is going to be the savior of the world, and you're going to call him Jesus. And Mary goes, okay, I get what you're saying, but I don't know how this is supposed to happen because I'm not pregnant, and I haven't done anything to get pregnant, and I'm not even married yet or anything. Like, uh, how is this supposed to happen? And the angel says, don't worry, God's got it under control. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of God will overshadow you, and you'll become pregnant. And as a result, when your baby is born, he's going to be known as the Son of God. So what do you think of that? And Mary goes, all right, if that's what God wants to do with me, okay. And so the angel leaves her, and Mary decides, okay, I guess i got to think about this now. And I have no idea how Joseph's going to take this, um, you know what? I think I might just go and hang out with my cousin for a while. Her cousin Elizabeth was actually pretty old, but she got pregnant six months earlier. And so Mary thought, why don't I go and hang out with my cousin Elizabeth for a while and help her out because she's going to give birth in a while. So and that just gives me some time to think about this and everything. So she goes down to a little town in the hill country of Judea, which is all the way over here somewhere. We aren't told what the name of that town is, but Mary goes all the way down there. It's about three days to walk all the way down there to go and visit with her cousin Elizabeth. And when she goes in to greet Elizabeth, Elizabeth says, this is amazing. Why am I so favored to have the mother of my Lord come here? As soon as you came in, the baby in me leapt for joy. And Mary must have been really encouraged when she heard that because she's not sure who would believe her story. But the moment she sees Elizabeth, Elizabeth says, I know exactly what's happened. This is awesome. This is great. And Mary ends up singing this lovely song, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And she goes on to talk about all the great things that are going to happen, because when Jesus is born, things are going to change. So Mary spends three months with Elizabeth, helping her out, and then Elizabeth's baby is born. 
His name is John, and he becomes John the baptizer, but we don't worry about him until Jesus becomes an adult. But that's what ends up happening there. So now it's time to go back home. And Mary now, after three months, decides, well, I guess I better go back. I've got to tell Joseph what's going on. So she makes her way all the way back to Nazareth. She comes and talks to John or Joseph, and Joseph sees her. It's like, great to see you again, Mary. You've been gone for a few months. She said, yeah, I was helping out Elizabeth, and, you know, she's had her baby now and stuff. And, and Joseph says to Mary, have you been putting on weight? And she says, well, yes, but no. <laughs> because now she's three months pregnant, you can start to see that something's going on. And so Mary says, look, Joseph, this is the way it is. And he te she tells him the story about the angel, what the angel said, and what Elizabeth said, and all of that. And so that's what's going on, Joseph. I am pregnant, and I know it wasn't you, and it's nobody else. It's just God, and I'm going to be giving birth to the Savior of the world. And Joseph goes, i got to think about this for a while. <laughs> and so he goes off to his place, and Mary goes to her place. And Joseph is thinking and pondering and going, okay, I don't know. Like, I don't know what Mary got into <laughs> but I'm not sure what I can do about this. And I know we're supposed to get married, but I don't think I can go through with this. So you know what, I'm just gonna, I, I'm gonna have to sleep on it, but I think what I'm gonna have to do is just figure out a way to just break it off with Mary and, and keep it kind of quiet for her sake. So that's what he decides to do. So he goes to bed, probably takes him a little while to get to sleep, but he finally gets to sleep, and then he has a dream. And you know what happens in his dream? Bam, this angel shows up. And we don't know if it's the same angel that went to visit Mary. I mean, we aren't told it's Gabriel, but probably was the same angel. And this angel in this dream says to Joseph, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She's telling the truth. It's real. What is in her, the baby in her, is conceived by the Holy Spirit. So she's going to give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So it's all good, Joseph. It's good. Make it happen. And the dream ends. And so now Joseph wakes up and he goes, okay, wow, all right. I guess, I guess I, Mary was telling the truth. And it must have been a big decision for her to say yes to. It's an equally big decision for me to say yes to. Let's do this together. So he gets to see Mary and she says to Mary, I believe you. I had a visit from the angel as well. I'm sorry I didn't believe you at first, but now I know, let's do this. We're going to be a family. Let's get married. And so they get married. And then they are going to set up house in Nazareth. Because this is where they're living right now. And so they get a house. And for the next six months, they're living in their house. They got married and they're waiting for the baby to be born. And as they get to the ninth month of Mary's pregnancy... Because you gotta be pregnant for nine months before you have the baby. That's the way it normally works. This other guy shows up out of nowhere. This guy here. This is Caesar Augustus. Now, 2,000 years ago, they didn't have cameras. So if you wanted to know what somebody looked like, someone either had to paint your picture or they made a sculpture of you. So this is a sculpture of Caesar Augustus, and he was in charge of the entire Roman Empire. And Israel was part of the Roman Empire. So even though Israel had its own king in Jerusalem, the Emperor Augustus was over all of them. And Augustus said, I want to count everybody. He said, I want to know how many people are in my empire. And so I'm going to do a census. And so how are we going to do this? Because we're going to make this orderly and, and we're going to make this, you know, normal and, and, and straighten it all out. I want you all to go back to your ancestral home. And what he means by that is, I want you to go and be counted where your great, 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 great grandpa lived. And Joseph and Mary hear this and they're going like, Really? Joseph's great-great-great-great-grandpa lived in Bethlehem a thousand years ago. How come we have to go to Bethlehem to be counted? But that's what the government says. You have to do what the government says. There could be debate about that. Anyway, um, so they have to go to Bethlehem. So now Mary is really pregnant, and she doesn't know when she's going to have a baby, but now they get going, and they start their journey. It's like three days. So they get going. Maybe they got about this far and decided to cramp camp for the night. And they wake up and they got to go again. So they get going. Then they get this far. We're getting closer. Mary goes, I know. I did this six months ago. 
Then they get going a bit further. Maybe they get to Jerusalem and decide, you know what? Let's just visit the city for a while and just take in the sights or whatever. Maybe they took an extra day. Who knows? But then it's only eight kilometers now. And then they make their way over to Bethlehem. Now, when they get to Bethlehem, there's a problem. Because they would have made arrangements to stay with a relative or somebody that they know. But of course, it's been a thousand years since his great, 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 great grandpa lived there. And there are a lot of people in the family now. So by the time Mary and Joseph show up, all the rooms in the houses are taken. All the guest rooms and all that kind of stuff. All that's left is a room where they keep their animals. Because back in that day, they would bring their animals into their house. And so Mary and Joseph had to sleep in that part of the house where the animals were. So let's say that in this house, they had a donkey and an ox. And so since the donkey and ox are here, they have to eat. And so they eat out of a thing called a manger from the French, manger, to eat. It's basically a feeding trough. And so there they are watching the, dog, the ox and the donkey eat. And they're thinking, would have been nice to have a room, but at least this is better than nothing. We're here, we can be counted, deal with the census and take it from there. Well, while they're there, the time comes for Mary to give birth. And so she goes into labor and sure enough, the baby is born. And the baby is a boy, just like the angel said. And just like the angel said, Joseph names him Jesus, which means the Lord saves. But now they have this newborn baby and they're thinking, I can't hold him forever. Got to be able to put him somewhere and he doesn't have a bed. You know what? That manger looks pretty soft and comfortable and warm with all of that straw. So they tell the donkey and the ox to get lost. And they come over here and put the baby in the manger because it's a nice warm place for them to stay. And now that works out rather well. And the donkey and the ox can be hungry for a while. It's not a big deal. Well, while all this is going on, we learned that there are some shepherds out in a field nearby. Here's my field. So there's the field. Here's some sheep. Because you got to have sheep if you want to be a shepherd. Here's the shepherd with the little lamb. See the little lamb right there? The little baby sheep. And I think this is the shepherd's wife. And it looks like he's got the shepherd's lunchbox. So there they are. It's the middle of the night. And they're taking care of their sheep because that's the way it worked back then. And in the middle of the night, while they're sitting there taking care of the sheep, something amazing happens. Any idea what happens? Right. Bam! An angel shows up. <clears throat> and the angel says, hi! And they're all totally freaked out. And they say, don't be afraid. I'm bringing you good news, actually. Really, seriously, good news. Trust me. To you, this day, like right now, the Savior has been born in Bethlehem. And this is going to be a great thing for everybody. And I wanted to let you guys know. And then all of a sudden, bam, a whole pile of angels show up and start singing this song. Glory to God in the highest and peace to those on whom God's favor rests. And the angel, the, the shepherds get to have their own private angel concert. After they're done singing, they go away. Then the shepherds go, wow, that was cool. <laughs> What do we do now? And one shepherd says, well, didn't you hear what the angel said? The angel said that, among other things, that this is a sign for us. We are going to be able to find the baby. All we got to do is find the baby who's wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. There can't be too many of those, right? Let's go check it out. So they rush in from the field and go to Bethlehem to start looking for a baby who's in a manger. I don't know if they left the sheep behind or not, but whatever. The Bible doesn't tell us that. So eventually they start searching around in Bethlehem in the middle of the night, and finally they come upon Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus in the manger. And they go, this is the kid. This is the one. And so the shepherds are telling Mary and Joseph what happened, which is pretty amazing. But they just go, wow, this is so cool. This is great. And then after a little while, the shepherd probably thought, you know, Mary's probably really tired. We have to let her sleep. So let's go. Let's just tell everybody what we heard. And so they went out and told everybody that they had found this, this baby. And they had this experience and all of that. And the Bible tells us that everybody that they talked to was amazed. They don't tell us why they were amazed. Just that they were amazed. And I'm thinking 
that if someone woke you up at three o'clock in the morning to say that a special baby got born, you might be kind of amazed that someone would go and do that to you. But in any case, that's all we know. They were amazed for whatever reason. And then evidently, the shepherds go back to their sheep and carry on doing their shepherd thing. Mary and Joseph, meanwhile, are just carrying on being new parents. They're waiting for their turn to be counted because that's the reason they're in Bethlehem in the first place. And once that finally happens, they decide, you know what? Everybody's left now. They've all gone back. Why don't we just stay here? Why bother going back? It's too soon to go back anyway. And they thought, you know what? That's a good idea. So they buy a house in Bethlehem and decide that this is going to be their home now. So they go into their home. The ox and the donkey can have their manger back because they don't need it anymore because Jesus will have his own bed. And now they're living in Bethlehem and they're living there for one or two years, just making life happen because that's what they do. Well, in the meantime, while all this is going on, we've got some dudes over here in Baghdad. And these guys are called magi. That's where we get the word magician from and magic. We were talking about Harry Potter earlier. These guys are kind of like scientists and fortune tellers at the same time. They're doing astronomy, looking at the stars, but they're also doing astrology. They think the gods can talk to you through the stars or whatever. But they're over here in Baghdad doing their thing. And one of them notices this star rise in the east. And they go, hey, wait a minute. Do you see that star? Where is it? It looks like it's over where Israel is. You know what? That's telling me a new king of Israel has been born. So what we should do is go over representing Persia here. Let's go over to Jerusalem and recognize that new king and honor that king because it's a king. And this is what it's important to do because we want our nation to have a good relationship with that nation. It's called diplomacy. Can you say diplomacy? <clears throat> so let's do that. So they take their camel and they get going. Now, I got to say, you see that there are three of them, right? And we have this idea that there are three wise men or we three kings of Orient are. Well, they weren't kings. And we don't know. The Bible doesn't say there were three of them. There could have been two. There could have been 23. I mean, who knows? But anyway, we got three of them. I mean, this guy just doesn't stand up. He just bums around all the time. <laughs> so these guys are going and they start making their way from Baghdad. They start making their way to Israel. Now, if you think a king has been born somewhere, it makes sense to go to the capital city, right? Well, that's exactly what they do. They come to Jerusalem here, because it's the capital city, and they come to the palace, and the king over Israel at that time is a guy named Herod. Now, I don't have a figure for Herod, so I'm just going to use this donkey, because you'll find out that Herod is a real donkey in this story. So they're talking to King Herod. And they say, greetings, O king, Herod. We are here because we know that a new king of Israel has been born. We saw his star, and we want to honor him. And Herod goes, right, okay, <clears throat> yeah, just a sec, give me a second, guys. And he goes off, and he calls his scribes and his other smart people, and he says, I didn't hear about a king being born, did you? And they're going, nope. Okay, but the Bible says something about a king, right, a Messiah or something. Where's the Messiah supposed to be born? So let, give us a sec, we'll look it up. So they look up in the Bible, they find in the prophet Micah that it says that he's supposed to be born in Bethlehem. And, and Herod goes, okay, thanks. So Herod comes back to the wise men and says to him, the baby has been born in Bethlehem. That's what our scriptures tell us. And he says, by the way, can you do me a favor? I'm really busy, I can't get there right now but I would love to be able to honor the baby too. So if you would go to Bethlehem and, and find the baby, and once you do, go ahead and honor the, honor the baby and all that kind of stuff, but then let me know where the baby is so that tomorrow I can come and, wor and worship the baby too. That isn't what Herod wanted to do. Herod actually was thinking, if a new king is born, then he's not going to get to be king very long. So he actually wants to get rid of Jesus. It's kind of scary, but he actually wants to kill Jesus. And that's why he's asking the wise men to tell him where Jesus is. Well, the wise men have no idea about this. They just figure, okay, no problem, thanks. We'll head off to Bethlehem. So they go to Bethlehem, and they look around, and they finally get Jesus' address. I don't know how, but they did. 
And they come and they see Mary and Joseph and Jesus. And then, as you do when you're doing diplomacy, you give gifts to the new king. And so they give gold and frankincense and myrrh. And Mary and Joseph are amazed. I mean, the last time anything like this happened was almost a couple of years ago when the shepherds show up. But here these rich guys from Baghdad come and they're giving them these really expensive gifts. And so they say, thank you. And the wise men say, no problem, that's what we do. And so we're honoring your new king. Well done, you. We're going to go back home now. And so they find a hotel and crash for the night. And they are warned that they ought not to go back the way they came because Herod actually wants to harm the child. So they decide, all right, we're not going to do that. And so they go back home to Baghdad a different way. So let's just say they go this way instead. And they go back home. Now Herod is back over here thinking, where did those guys go? I told them to come. They haven't come. It's been two days, three days, whatever. Oh, I see. They double-crossed me. They didn't listen to me. They didn't want to do what I said. Okay, fine then. Tomorrow, I'm going to take a bunch of soldiers. We're going to go to Bethlehem. We're going to find that baby, and we're going to deal with him. And so that night, Joseph and Mary and Jesus are sleeping in their house in Bethlehem, and Joseph has a dream. And guess what happens in Joseph's dream? Bam! An angel shows up and says, Joseph, you got to get up right now, because you got to know that Herod is planning to harm Jesus. So here's the thing. You and Mary and Jesus got to get up right now. You got to pack your things. You got to get out of town. And I want you to go to Egypt. Don't go to Baghdad. That's too obvious. Go to Egypt. Come over here. He'll never expect you to go to Egypt. So Joseph and Mary and Jesus pack up all their stuff and their gold and frankincense and myrrh and everything. And they make their way over here to Egypt. And they come and park where the Sphinx and the... And the uh, pyramids are and they stay there for a year two years three years we don't know how long they stay there but the gifts that the wise men gave them probably provided the money they needed to live while they were in Egypt and so they hang out there and they're safe and protected Herod can't find baby Jesus so that's good and eventually Herod dies so while Mary and Joseph and Jesus are in the land of the pyramids Herod eventually is no longer pursuing Jesus. There's no longer a threat. They're not having to worry about what he might do. And so, one night, Joseph is having his sleep again, and he has another dream. And guess what? Bam! An angel shows up and says, Joseph, I have good news. Herod has died. He's gone. There's no more threat to the baby, so you and Jesus and Mary can come back. And Joseph goes, awesome. We're waiting to come back. So this would be great. So they go and they pack up all their stuff again. I don't know how much of their gold and frankincense and myrrh was left, but they pack up all their things and they come back and they make their way towards Bethlehem. But then they get some interesting news. They discover that um, Herod's son Archelaus is now going to be the king. And they're thinking, really? Herod's son is now reigning? He's going to be exactly the kind of donkey Herod is. So I don't think I want to hang out anywhere close to Jerusalem. So they decide, you know what? Let's just keep on going. And so they bypass Bethlehem, and they make their way all the way back up to Nazareth, where they started. They decide, okay, let's find our old home here, and we'll set up our house and what's left of our presence, and we'll live in Nazareth. And so they set up their house in Nazareth. The Bible tells us this is why Jesus is called a Nazarene or a Nazarene. This is why you often hear Jesus referred to as Jesus of Nazareth. Even though the story says he was born in Bethlehem, ever since he was four, five, six, whatever, he grew up in Nazareth. Now we don't hear about Jesus again in the Bible until he's 12 years old, and then not again until he's 30 years old. So we don't have any more story to tell. But that's kind of the full Christmas story, seeing how we put the two stories together and where they all went and what happened. And now Jesus is in Nazareth, and we're ready to wait for the day that he gets to start his ministry. So, 
Any questions about the Christmas story? A lot of angel stuff going on in that story, hey? Eh? Well, thanks. Gabriel, you got a question? Looks like you might have a question. Get ready to raise your hand. No? Okay. Well, good. Well, there we go. I hope that was fun and informative. So because we've been talking about angels a lot, we have to finish by saying, oh, yes, Lydia. Uh, Frankie, pardon me. Oh, can okay, you put your hand up? I had a question. Okay. Well, let's finish then by singing an angel song. So we're going to close with the Christmas carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We got to do something about angels, well, all the angels we heard about. So this will be our closing song, and then we can all go and do our Christmas Eve stuff tonight. Sunday morning, and if not, we'll see you in the new year. So, hey, many blessings.